Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches y bienvenidos. Welcome to the celebration of success and achievement that each and every one of you is part of. My name is Roberto Salazar, and for the past 10 years, I have been privileged to serve as the chairman of the board of directors of the Hispanic Access Foundation. The board of directors comprises a team of dedicated individuals from diverse professions with a shared commitment to the Latino community. On behalf of my fellow board members, Paula Neira, Dr. Marta Sanchez, Marcela Garcini, Dr. Velma Montoya, Mar Muñoz Visoso, and Armando Rodriguez, I welcome you all to this event as we celebrate Hispanic Access Foundation and highlight our important work over the years. Social distancing might stop us from giving handshakes, hugs, and pats on the back, but it doesn't stop us from showing love and commitment for this organization and its important mission. I hope all of you enjoyed the networking session using the AirMeet event platform. There will also be time at the end of the program to continue the conversations you've started, so please stick around. Just a reminder, if anyone needs assistance or help with the technology this evening, the help button or the purple question mark on the bottom right of your screen takes you to AirMeet, WhatsApp support, and frequently asked questions to assist you with any issues during the AirMeet. Thank you for making Hispanic Access Foundation a priority this evening. I know you have many demands for your time, and you've been most generous for sharing some of your time with us this evening as we celebrate this important milestone. A very special shout out goes to our sponsors who helped us make this possible. A special thank you to our champion sponsors, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation and the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. Just as for all of us, the coronavirus has dramatically shifted their worlds. We're grateful to our sponsors who continue to support us at, the, at a time when it's needed most. On behalf of the Board of Directors, a heartfelt thank you to all of our sponsors. We appreciate you. And now it's my pleasure to welcome my friend and colleague, the mistress of ceremonies this evening, Hispanic Access Foundation's Chief Executive Officer, Maite Arce. Good evening, Maite. How are you? Estoy muy bien, Roberto. Muchas gracias. It's wonderful to be here and to share this moment with you and our friends and our supporters. Bienvenidos a todos and thank you for joining us to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Hispanic Access Foundation. Please indulge me as I take a moment to take you back to the real beginning of our story. As Latinos, we are optimistic about the future. Most of us believe that our community does not speak in one unified voice, but instead in many different voices. We believe that the, in the United States, we should be valued more than we are today. We struggle to reconcile our own identity and experiences with the way society perceives us and we're looking for advocates to step up to the political stage and represent the power that we possess. Most of us feel that we share values with other Americans, but we don't feel valued and respected by some politicians, pop culture, and the media. For us, belonging is a catalyst value, and we share the strong duty to uplift our members of our own community. Despite the challenges facing our community, and our society, we remain resiliently optimistic in the long view. Most young Latinos are informed, not defined by their diverse cultural heritage. They take the best from both worlds and they create a third way that accepts and validates their heritage and their identity while embracing exposure to a larger society. My inspiration to establish a new organization were my parents, Jose and Elena, and the Spanish speaking communities who access, who need access, capacity, belief that they can create big changes. I founded Hispanic Access Foundation for the freedom to lead in a way that's right for my community. My community deserves excellence, trustworthiness, selfless support by people who deliver results with nimbleness y corazón. We all need someone to believe in us and to lift us up as we reach for our dreams. Belief and uplifting are the key essentials that people took time to do for me. 
And for 10 years, this is what the community of Hispanic Access Foundation that we call Familia have done for others. There's a tremendous strength and power in the Latino community. We are the essential workers. Latino consumer spending power was reported at 2.6 trillion. The fastest growing small businesses are Latina owned. There are more Latinos going to college than ever. Yet in the year of COVID-19, there have been tremendous challenges where health disparities and hardship are more evident than ever. Still there's resilience in our community. The Hispanic Access Foundation Familia includes our team, our board of directors, our networks, including our pastoral leaders who are located all the way from Lawrence, Massachusetts to San Isidro, California, and young professionals and partner organizations, individual donors, foundations, federal and corporate philanthropic partners. The beneficiaries of our work are people in communities, particularly the leaders who share our partners for our passion for uplifting their own. And today you're going to learn the many ways that they are present in our work and we are present in theirs. Those are the people who support our mission and believe in our work. Our familia includes you. In my life, I've been given gifts in selfless gestures by wonderful people. I was born in Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico. Although as a child, my parents moved us to Southern California, we still stayed close enough to our family in Mexico that I had constant exposure to my heritage and my culture. However, most of the time you'd find me in urban Southern California. I was able to observe and sometime experience the hardships and the joys of a family that immigrated to the United States and worked hard and achieved the American dream. My parents gave me many gifts, including my faith in God, my work ethic, their love, their sacrifices. I often worried about my parents and felt guilty for all they had to go through uh, and for all their unrealized personal dreams that they had for themselves. And those of you who have parents who struggled in life, you understand this. The many milestones and the key experiences are all part of who I am today. One key moment in my life was when my mom's employers, John and Anna Clark, who watched me grow up, offered to send me to college. And I remember my mom's joy and my dad's great reluctance to accept the offer and how we all worked on him to change his mind. This education, one I had never planned for, changed my path in life. And I have the Clarks to thank for this selfless gift. For me, it was exciting to go out of state to college, but given my upbringing, it was hard to leave my parents, especially when they depended on me to help them navigate through life's daily challenges. When I entered the professional world, I started my career in advertising and media. And soon after I switched to the nonprofit sector where I was more at home, helping others. And in this work, I found that I have a gift for building trust with hard to reach communities. The secret of building trust is doing so with a genuine heart and wanting to help because I can and because it's the right thing to do. It really helped to have bosses that believed in me and that were an important part to my growth when they gave me freedom to Im implement programs that were uniquely designed for and by communities. This was when I saw the most growth and impact. Hispanic Access Foundation has several programmatic pillars, including financial empowerment, education, workforce, public health, leadership, and the environment. Working with and through national and community-based partners, we've implemented high impact programming that touches all of these pillars. And our programs have included Preparate para un futuro mejor, a tax education program, Juntos Podemos contra el Cancer, a cancer prevention and screening initiative, the MANO Project, a career pathways program for young leaders, our conservation program, outdoor recreation, stewardship and advocacy, the Hispanic Leadership Network, mentoring, peer networking, and leadership development for pastoral leaders. 
and our new pilot program, the Dream Scholarship, that provides economic relief for undocumented college students. I have to say my favorite part of this work has been the people. One of the most incredible benefits of leading an organization is having the privilege to partner with amazing staff and individuals who share our commission, our commitment to serve our communities. Hispanic Access engaged corporate partners like H&R Block and their bilingual tax professionals who went out to the churches and learned that they can change people's lives. H&R Block's community-based tax pros are their best asset. After seeing them in action, people in our community were motivated to seek a similar career path and work for H&R Block too. Another one of the perks uh, of this work has been that's been very special for me has been eating sancocho for the first time at the home of Pastor Angel Melo and his family in Queens, New York, and going to eat Texas barbecue with Dr. Francisco and Beli Perico Lope in Austin, Texas. Hispanic Access Foundation builds relationships long term that lead us to leveraging resources to helping each other and helping our communities. How we've done this work has changed in the past 10 years. However, the enduring character and the core values remain. That's what holds us together. And I mentioned us because it takes a village and has taken a village and will take a village in the future to continue to build Hispanic Access Foundation in our community. And this work includes my supportive husband, Ted, and my parents, Elena and Jose Arce, our goal is not to build a network that consists of one community. We aim to build networks of many communities. For example, Latino faith leaders, including those representing diverse ethnic, racial, and economic backgrounds who are critical to a flourishing and humane society. Young leaders who are starting their careers, Latina business owners, the fastest growing in American business, and Latino professionals who serve as administrators, elected officials, CEOs, that feel that sense of duty to give back to their own. Historically, in the life of our organization, we've seen the values that these leaders share as they take part in uplifting their own. For example, Dr. Armando and Dr. Luz Vera, leaders in the Rio Grande Valley's Pastors Association, and trusted sources for hundreds of churches across the region, they partnered with Hispanic Access to bring financial and health education to communities. They transferred the trust of the community that they have to Hispanic Access and to our corporate and public health partners, expanding access, resources, services, and support for thousands of people. Linda Sosa from San Cayetano Catholic Church, the oldest and largest church in Denver, worked tirelessly with us to provide validation and increase the self-confidence of Diana Luna, a young Latina advocate whose civic engagement, stewardship of public lands led her to meeting with President Obama in the Oval Office at the signing of Browns Canyon National Monument. Luis Villa and Jose Gonzalez of Latino Outdoors who have supported Latino Conservation Week where so many partners have created a community where people feel a sense of belonging and connection. A place where there are others like us, advocates, leaders, community, and we feel comfortable sharing our talent, our professions, our interests, our concerns for the environment, race and justice issues, our oceans, our lands, our, and, our, and threats of climate change. This also reminds me of Dr. Mani Galaviz, Norma Hartel, Ashley M. Perez Rivera, who are leaders from our first Latino Heritage Internship Program cohort. As alumni, they collaborated with Hispanic Access and scholar Josephine Talamantes to develop a report called Story, Place, and Culture that lists important cultural and historic sites that are critical to Latino communities and deserve permanent protection. They helped us to elevate the stories of local communities who are fighting to protect their histories. And in turn, we elevated these scholars, their work, and ensured that, ensured that decision makers were listening. This work continues and will be expanded next year. At this point, I'd like to turn the program over to our three extraordinary program directors, starting with Michelle Newish-Fonder, director of the MONO Project, 
Shana Edberg, Director of the Conservation Program, and Christine Tamara, our Partnership Engagement Manager. They will share a short update about their program and their vision and introduce one of their network members to share their personal impact story. Hi everyone, saludos a todos. How exciting to be celebrating 10 years of existence for Hispanic Access Foundation. My name is Michelle Nguyen-Schwander. I'm the director of our MANO project, joining you today from Denver, Colorado. Reflecting on the inception of the MANO project, it's inspiring to think of its growth and the impact we've had in just five years. We implemented our first workforce development initiative in 2015. The program aligned perfectly with our mission and focused on recruiting and developing Latinos through internship positions to help build a more diverse and inclusive workforce. We saw this program as another bridge of access, connecting our community with amazing opportunities for professional growth, elevating them as they begin their careers. We managed a cohort of 20 interns that year. Since then, we've grown tremendously and have served over 260 interns who are now part of our alumni network. The core purpose for the MANA project is to connect, build, and develop thoughtful Latino leaders who share a passion for serving and strengthening their communities. Our programs build leadership capacity among Latinos with the goal of having more representation at the table and in leadership positions, better reflecting our nation. The most fulfilling aspects of our work is forming meaningful relationships with the interns we're serving and celebrating their career successes during and after their internships. Our vision for MANO is to continue the expansion of our programs by providing even more opportunities for Latino students, grads, and professionals. We'll do this by cultivating partnerships with new organizations who align with our vision of providing a path for the development of Latino leaders. We'll expand the types of positions being offered in STEM and business fields and explore new opportunities to support our alumni network. I'd like to introduce Yvette Lopez, who was part of our first cohort with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 2016. Yvette interned at the Stuart B. McKinney National Wildlife Refuge in New Haven, Connecticut. She is now an employee with the Fish and Wildlife Service, supporting visitor services for the Pacific Southwest region. Yvette was instrumental in MANO's growth within her region and is now in a supervisory role mentoring one of our current MANO interns. She embodies our mission and shares the passion of serving and strengthening her community. We're thrilled to have her as part of our familia. Hi everyone, my name is Yvette Lopez and I'm here to share my half story with you today. 2016, I began my search for postgraduate internships in the natural sciences and conservation. During my search, I came across a new set of internships with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, an agency I had never heard of that involved connecting urban communities with nature and the outdoors. Little did I know that this three-month internship would define my career path and future aspirations. It was an unforgettable summer working with local families and youth in New Haven, Connecticut and introducing them to their local wildlife refuge. I had the privilege of working with the community for two years through an extended internship that would not have been possible without HALF or the Fish and Wildlife Service. The HALF experience provided me with opportunities to meet leaders in the conservation field, network with other interns, and work on meaningful community projects. Throughout my internship, I received a tremendous amount of support that encouraged me to think outside the box and plan for events for Latino Conservation Week and Hispanic Heritage Month. Thanks to HALF, I found my passion in environmental education and interpretation and knew what I wanted to do as a career. Today, I work as a park ranger for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Sacramento, California, where we recently established the HALF MANO project in our Pacific Southwest region. It is an honor to serve as a mentor to our incoming interns and provide them with these opportunities. I look forward to seeing the program grow as we continue to inspire the next generation of conservation leaders. I couldn't be happier to be a part of the Half Familia. Gracias por todo. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Shana Edberg. I'm Hispanic Access Foundation's Director of Conservation Programs, and I'm joining you from my home office in Baltimore, Maryland. Our conservation program has an incredible history that I'm so proud to be a part of. This program has been groundbreaking in elevating and celebrating Latinos' love for the outdoors with Latino Conservation Week. Our leaders have met with President Obama and made tangible change in protecting lands that are important to Latino heritage. We have shown the world Latinos' deep connection to the ocean, the Colorado River, and our treasured parks and public spaces. 
This year, we helped pass the full funding and permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. For 2021 and beyond, we have big plans for conservation. This March, we'll be hosting the first ever Latino Advocacy Week. Imagine Latino Conservation Week, but taking all of that energy and that drive and creativity and bringing those Latino voices to our lawmakers. We'll be training our networks on how to have a hand in our democratic process and building those bridges to connect our network of Latino leaders to their elected officials. We're also relaunching Por la Creación, our alliance of incredible Latino faith leaders who are passionate about being stewards of God's creation. We want to invest in these leaders and their congregations so they are trained and able to elevate the voices of their communities and meet their needs. There are a lot of policy changes we are hoping to make in the new year, but to give you an idea of our goals, we want to close the nature gap so Latinos and other communities of color have the same access to nature as everyone else. We want our communities to be resilient to today's challenges and to the future risks we face in a changing climate. And everything we do in conservation promotes equity, justice, and public health. And now I'd like to introduce one of our founding Por la Creación leaders, Pastor Frank Ruiz in Southern California, who runs the Audubon Society's Salt and Sea Program. Pastor Ruiz was instrumental in forming HAF's conservation vision and impact, and we are so excited to have him here and as an advisor in Por la Creación. Thank you again. Hi, my name is Frank Ruiz. I am a Native American by race, Mexican by culture. I've had the opportunity to get educated on both sides of the border. I've been a pastor and a mental health professional for over 14 years. Currently, I work as a Southern Sea Program Director for Audubon, California, that seeks to protect the fate of hundreds of species that rely on this body of water along the Pacific Flyway, and the public health of more than 650,000 people that live in this region. My collaboration with the Half Family goes back at least six or seven years. During our work at the California Desert, trying to establish the three national monuments that ended up protecting over 1.8 million acres of public lands for future generations. Through our work with Half, I was able to organize, collaborate with different community groups, communities of faith, elected officials, to the point that my work was recognized by President Obama and I was personally invited to join him at the Oval Office to celebrate the establishment of these three national monuments. My mission continues to empower, my mission continues to engage the non-traditional voices. Through HALF, we were able to launch Por la Creación, a faith-based alliance with a mission to educate and empower the Latino communities, the Latino leaders in areas of uh, policy and advocacy. My mission continues in the conservation world. I created a program that includes not only protection for the environment, but includes environmental justice elements, social and economic opportunities, for the non-traditional communities. Through these 10 years that I've collaborated with the Half Family, I have seen the tremendous work. And I want to congratulate the Half Family for their efforts to empower leaders like myself and my community to be part of the decision makings. Our job continues. Our work is not done. So I want to congratulate them all. Thank you very much. Hola, my name is Christine Tamara, and I serve as Hispanic Access Foundation's Partnership Engagement Manager. In this role, I connect and create community throughout HAF's programs and networks, especially within our Hispanic Leadership Network, which provides professional leadership development, quality resources, and mentorship. 
The Hispanic Leadership Network is equipping pastors and ministers who serve tens of thousands of people to become missional leaders who are able to serve the needs of their region with the necessary resources and tools to cultivate a thriving community. In 2020, leaders in our network received vital trainings such as crisis response training with the American Red Cross, mental health and personal well-being with Breath of Life Foundation, financial education with Thrivent Financial, and civic engagement with Bread for the World and Sojourners. In 2021, we will continue to serve to expand the reach of our leadership networks and build bridges with trustworthy partners in order to equip and ensure that leaders have the resources, tools, and support they need to be successful first responders in the communities where they serve. With that said, I have the privilege of introducing an incredible leader who is an active member of our Hispanic Leadership Network, Pastor Margarita Flores, who is currently serving as the Pastoral Associate and Parish Life Director at California's Historic San Gabriel Mission in Los Angeles. Hello, my name is Margarita Flores, and I wanted to share a little bit about my experience with Hispanic Access Foundation. Uh, being enrolled in 2019 with Hispanic Leadership Network, um, I have to say that I am so grateful and blessed that I was part of this program. Uh, first of all, because I met so many leaders from different faith um, based or, uh, organizations and also leaders from the ecumenical uh, realm of, of uh, different churches, different backgrounds, different um, communities, that that by itself, it was a very powerful experience. It is important to speak to other leaders. It is important to hear the voices and the struggles and the complaints and also the, the joys of our ministry. Um, also through the Hispanic Access Foundation, one thing that I was also very grateful is that I was able to speak to a representative, Judy Shu, um, and share the also the concern that I had about uh, many of the inmates that were coming out of jail at the beginning of the pandemic and not being able to find jobs. And as fighter fighters in jail, they also needed to have the opportunity to have access to the programs that they can train them and so they can be part of the fighter fighters uh, community uh, and, and workforce. And then when I share this with her, I encourage her to apply, you know, to support the uh, Assembly Bill 2147. And when I heard that it, was, it passed and it was signed uh, by our government, I was very, very grateful. And so I have to say nothing more than good things about Hispanic Access Foundation and to also uh, provide this, um, you know, this uh, report that I am very, very grateful and blessed that I was part of their leadership network. So thank you so much and um, I, you know, blesses to everyone, all of you. Thank you. Wow, team, it's so good to see your faces and it's so hard heartwarming to hear the stories from our community network members. It reminds me of how remarkable our staff is and how they have nurtured Hispanic Access Foundation and how we have nurtured them. Yvette Lopez, you are amazing. You are also one of our original intern cohort members and you, were, you have always been so dedicated to ensuring consistency and building community partnerships for both the wildlife refuge that you worked in in the new Northeast, but also, um, you know, building the roots there as well as now years later, you're employed by the service in your home state and creating new opportunities for young leaders to follow in your footsteps. You're an incredible role model and we're so proud of your work and so thankful that you are giving back to others uh, who are following in your footsteps. And Frank, your story is powerful, so unique and we're so grateful that you are the co-founder of Por La Creación 
and I mean three national monuments that took several years and and work by many people and so much so much work uh, to be achieved. And I want to mention that one other one other example, uh, one of the positive highlights this year was the passage of the Great American Outdoors Act which included a provision to enact permanent dedicated funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. LWCF was a policy that HAF and our community partners and many others spent close to five years uh, working on. And last year we saw the program finally granted permanent reauthorization. So why does this matter? Well, LWCF has supported and funded more than 42,000 parks and projects across the country. And for many Latino and diverse communities, these LWCF sites may be their only access to the outdoors. Those five years, while full of ups and downs, took time to bear fruit, but they will now be enjoyed by our children's children. It's important that we realize that the steps we take today, the work we put in today, the vision we implement today will impact tomorrow and for years to come. And with that, please enjoy this short Hispanic Access retrospective. Wow, what a great mission moment. Robert Fanger, thank you so much for capturing it so beautifully for all of us. Our work and our mission, of course, depends on the generous support of individuals and partners like you. If you have not already, please consider making a donation to Hispanic Access Foundation. 
you'll see the donate link on the live chat box. Hispanic Access Foundation's proven process was developed in the early years. Our eight strategies begin and end with our community's involvement, and it includes research, data, training, support, and connection to partners and peers. Our proven process has been tested and improved over the years. Based on our experience, we know that if the community leaders have the right information, tools, motivation, and support, they will take action to improve their lives and uplift their own. This impacts how we address climate change, health disparities, jobs, and our economy. But there's still so much work to be done. Latinos face intense health disparities, systemic inequities, threats posed by climate change, and environmental justice issues. And we are still missing from the discussions that form most of public policies that impact our communities. We have a vision for the next 10 years of Hispanic access. We will leverage the resilience and optimism that Latinos feel for the long term, help the many unique and diverse voices of our communities recover their narrative, increase awareness of positive developments and the accomplishments of our community. We will help leaders from our community move to the center of efforts to solve the complex challenges facing our communities where they will serve as navigators and thought leaders. By 2030, Hispanic Access will have built an interconnected network of thought leaders, 10,000 10, strong, who influence a million people. As our network grows, we will have brought greater impact to our nation's most pressing issues from climate change to equity and justice. We're keenly positioned to be the difference maker. For example, this summer we released a report in partnership with the Center for American Progress called The Nature Gap, confronting racial and economic disparities in the destruction and protection of nature in America. Not surprisingly, the report found that American society distributes nature's benefits and the effects of its destruction and decline unequally by race, income, and age. Now armed with this data, our work can fight against environmental injustices and disparities and emphasize more equitable distribution of public land and water protection, park creation and support and so on. Imagine a future when the US majority are soon to be the majority and Latinos being a large part of the population are resilient in a different way. We are more prepared, informed, recognized and valued for our accomplishments we are confident in our own identities and experiences. There are elected officials who represent our power and we have peer networks to support us. Our community is present in the discussion to form public policies and decisions are more equitable and policies are more successfully implemented in our communities. That's a pretty cool vision. So what will Hispanic Access's role be in this vision? It will be in providing support, access, resources, mentorship, and initiatives such as Latino Conservation Week and Latino Advocacy Week to provide and nurture places that give us the resources, support, and the sense of belonging. When I think of what matters most in our history, it is taking time to show gratitude for all who have believed in us and have contributed in some way to open the door level the path, provide the tools, lend us experience, and importantly, provide us with validation and love that keeps us going. There are so many people who share our desire to create thriving communities, and so many people I wish I had the time uh, with you this, to, this evening to thank. But I wanna thank our board of directors who have insisted on high standards and have advised us so closely our former team members who have made valuable contributions to our organization, like Jenny Brandt, mi co-fundadora, Liz Neuenschwander, Jill Wheeler, Sarah Benitez, Maria Rosman, Jessica Loya, Rodrigo Otarola, Lisette Bishens, and Chela Garcia. Our long-term trailblazing staff who are with us charting the new course for the next 10 years, including Christian Trasmonte, Michelle Neuenschwander, Christine Gutierrez, Robert Fanger, 
Did I mention Robert Banger? Not only was Robert with me in the early startup phase of Hispanic Access, he joined us as an employee years ago, but he's a critical part of our leadership team, responsible for our communications, our development, our innovative strategies, and this year, the integration of our organizational operating system. Whew. Our exceptionally talented team includes Jeff Simpson, Luke Arleben, Marlene Manso, Karina Mesa, Brenda Gallegos, Jessica Godinez and Evelyn Ramirez. Jessica and Evelyn are former uh, interns from our Mono Project, so we're so thrilled that they chose us uh, to continue their careers. Our partners and champions in action, Los Pastores, Líderes Comunitarios, and partners including Dr. Dr. Juan y Dr. Rocío Almanza, Martine Veronica Martinez, Pastora Ceci Ruano, Belarmino Dusan, Tomás, Alvarez, Gabriela Raya, members of the media like Germán González, The Next 100, Echo, Green Latinos, The American Red Cross, Corazón Latinos, Azul, The American Lung Association, Latina and Latino Physicians, and the incredible park rangers who are out in the field representing our communities. It's important to recognize our Latino elected officials that have been champions in our community like Rosana Gabaldon and Raul Grijalva from Arizona, Nanette Baragan and Raul Ruiz from California, and many others. The Mano Project alumni champions in action, like Tomas Tessa, Fabiola Torres, David Riera, Vir Virginia Ansaldi, just to name a few. And I wanna mention that the gift of mentorship, peer support, encouragement has been very important to me personally. These 10 years I've leaned on Andrea Keller Helzor, Dr. Francisco Colo, Roberto Salazar, and the late Dr. Jesse Miranda. Les mencioné Dr. Francisco Colo, Dios mío, una, un amigo y, y espiritual muy importante en mi vida. Corporate partners who are so amazing and have treated us like their family. H&R Block's former multicultural team, David, Trisha, Pasha, Diane, Magdalena, Sonia, Southern California Edison, Janelle Hartley. The extraordinary team at the National Parks Conservation Association and at the National Recreation and Parks Association. Our colleagues at American Rivers, who we've floated down the river with, uh, have supported us as we engaged our comunidades in protecting the flows of the Colorado River. The team at Western Conservation Foundation supported us as we, and our communities as we advocated to permanently protect their public lands and create new national monuments. And the amazing women, Heather, Meg, Christine at David and Lucille Packard Foundation, who helped us make our work in oceans conservation possible. We greatly appreciate our federal partners and our exceptional colleagues at the National Park Service, including George McDonald and Ernestine White at the Office of Youth Services and RTCA, Stefan Nofield and Alan Turnbull. And at the US Forest Service, Merlin Masick, Christine Schmidt and Carmen Young and Chelsea Burns, Amy Lavole and Megan Wendig at the US Fish and Wildlife Service. It's especially meaningful to me to share how grateful I am to the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation for their belief in our mission and purpose that has provided us the opportunity to transition from a good organization to a great organization. Muchas gracias to our generous individual donors, ustedes que han contribuido su tiempo, sus recursos, su experiencia, su amistad, and those who have provided much needed unrestricted support and financial resources for special projects like our Dream Scholarship. Again, thanks for everyone who came tonight, all of you who have made this possible. Those of you who have donated or plan to donate to our mission, we appreciate your faith in us and support in this journey. And now I'd like to turn it over to Roberto for our closing remarks. Thank you, Maite, for sharing a glimpse at the amazing and impactful work that the Hispanic Foundation, Access Foundation does to connect Latinos and others with partners and opportunities to improve lives and create an equitable society. 
and thank you everybody here this evening for your continued commitment to the ideal that one day every Latino individual in America will enjoy good physical health and a healthy natural environment, a high quality education, economic success, civic engagement in his or her community with the sum of improving the future of America and that Latinos are at the center of developing solutions to important challenges in our communities and helping to develop thriving communities for all. And thank you again to our sponsors for helping us make it all happen. Merry Christmas to all, and God bless you. Please join us back in the networking session, and let's continue the conversation.